Hi guys, so I have a vision, okay? Um, I have a vision of, and this, this one is crazy, um, a physical miniature Animal Crossing Island. Um, I don't know how I'm going to make this happen. I know bits and pieces of how I'm going to make this happen, but, um, Let's face it, my last island took me a year <laughs> to put together. Um, so I don't know <laughs> um, all of the logistics of this, but I know how I'm going to start. And I'm going to start by building the first thing that you come across in the game, which is of course, resident services. Now, the way that I plan on doing this is just using scraps and things that I find around the house for the most part. Now I do think I'm going to build sort of the base of it and everything with foam board. Um, and I have some basswood that I might use here and there. Um, but for the most part, I just want to use stuff that I find around the house. So. So let's, this is one of those projects that you gotta get kind of elbow deep in and it's gonna take over the whole studio. So, um, I'm excited though, let's go, let's do that. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go kind of in and out with the voiceover as it goes cause there was a lot of footage and I didn't think that shortening it would have been great. So um, I'm just gonna kind of let you guys know what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I started off with just a piece of foam board as the base and this is just Dollar Tree foam board and um, I just cut out um, a piece that I thought was going to be big enough for the plaza area and I gave myself a little bit of a lip on the edge um, so that you know it won't get damaged until I put it on the long-term layout um, and then I did everything I could to try to replicate the circles. I don't have a compass apparently and uh, I have been able to find one so um, I'm gonna have to wind up buying myself one eventually but I did everything I could at first to try to just get even circles around for the bricks because they're laid in a circular path on the um, plaza in the game so um, I wound up just finding out what the center of my square was and uh, just drawing tick marks every, I think, eighth of an inch or something like that to put for the bricks. Um, I was going, the scale that I did here is, um, if you haven't played the game, uh, then everything is kind of done in squares. So you have squares that you build off of and, um, so I did one in-game square per inch. So, um, so, cause there's not really, I mean, these are not real buildings, you know, they're game buildings. So, um, I just did it as one square in the game is equal to one inch in real life. Um, and that's just how I did it. And I just, all I was doing here is I was taking a pencil or a pen I don't know why I was going back and forth between them but just kind of drawing out on the foam board and leaving a little bit of an indention as I went along so that later when I was painting these bricks that um, you could kind of see the texture of the bricks underneath um, just back and forth between pencil and pen and then the squiggly lines there were so that afterwards um, I could just kind of figure out where there's a series of lighter bricks you would see I'm looking at some reference images on my iPad as I do this um, there's a series of lighter bricks in the plaza and so the purple lines were to indicate where I needed to have the lighter bricks and then I just kind of loosely free-handed the individual bricks after I'd gotten all of the widths measured out for 
you know, the lines of the bricks. And I just went in by hand and very tediously put in marks for all of the individual bricks. This took a very long time, um, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Um, then I just primered the whole thing with some gesso. Um, for those of you that don't know, gesso is just sort of an artist uh, primer. So just covered the whole thing. I actually wound up doing two coats, one on camera and one off camera. I did have some sketches and plans where I had planned out everything beforehand and then of course you start getting into it and everything goes to hell so <laughs> um, uh, I did have some plans but looking at it I adjusted them a little bit and then yeah, after building I adjusted even more so um, just starting off by building the building with pieces of foam board I left the paper on these but I shouldn't have <laughs> I, I'll, I'll regret that later, but you'll see it's much, much later in the process, but I just made the sides of the buildings, used the sides of the buildings to figure out what the base needed to be, cut that out of foam board, and then glued it on, just using hot glue, and then I used this. This was molding paste, flexible molding paste, and because I wanted the building to have a brick texture, I will also regret that later, but um, you'll see that when it comes to that time. And this was me just kind of using a paper towel to add texture. And then after it had dried, I went back and sanded it so it wouldn't be so intense of a texture because I just wanted it to be a light brick thing. There's me trying to glue the paper back on where it was peeling up from the moisture. But um, then I just used a piece of this is basswood to build the doors. I didn't think this through and wound up actually making two sets of this door before I was done. I wasn't really actually super happy with either one, but um, just wanted to make the doors, measured now, see where they were gonna go. And then this was me kind of drawing into the uh, molding paste to try and get that same brick texture like I did on the plaza flooring area and uh, again you'll see later <laughs> um, and then I chose to make a whole different door so you can see there I kind of used the first ones and then decided that instead of doing that I would just build the whole sort of front area in and then I added extra around the edges to give it that lip and then just kind of drew the doors in the back piece um, so that it would look dimensional. So I did make two sets of doors and only used one, but <laughs> um, that's fine. And then I, I tried to use the pen to indent the basswood a little bit um, so that you could see the texture on the door itself. And that didn't work super well. I s never did really get what I thought was the best solution for that, but there it is, whatever. <laughs> um, so I just, I was never really happy with the final result of that. And then just different pieces of basswood. Honestly, I bought a bag of scrap basswood at, I believe, Hobby Lobby for $10. And it's a huge bag with whole bunch of those flat pieces and a handful of those thick stick looking ones um, so I just have a whole bunch of this laying around the house and we'll be able to use it for a lot of these projects um, and then I just I wanted a little bit of extra support on the bottom of the structure too so I went ahead and added thicker pieces of basswood to the bottom and then did the same thing with the steps there you just used some thicker basswood pieces to build the steps up. I also took that flexible molding paste you see there and just kind of 
tweaked the edges of everything to make it look a little more of the smooth transition between like the different pieces of basswood and the different pieces of foam board and everything um, just to sort of even that texture um, and then I just took a piece of foam board to add structure to the center for the roof and just glued the basswood to it and then shaped it accordingly. Um, so I measured the foam board a little bit. I think it could have been a little bit shorter looking back, but it's close enough <laughs> and I'm happy enough with it. And rather than actually taking measurements and cutting it before I put it on, I did it the lazy way and just put it on and then cut it. <laughs> and then trimmed up the top just a little bit to make it even. And then I started the process of making sh shingles. And this is just an old cereal box. So um, recycling is a great place for materials for craft projects like this. So um, I just took, I measured out and made a whole bunch of strips of this um, cereal box and then cut them almost all the way to the top to make shingles. just kind of loosely marked where I wanted the shingles on the first part of the roof here and just so that I could have them even all the way around more than anything else and I knew that I wanted I think it's four layers that I wound up doing so I wanted to make sure that they were even and looked good and then I also wanted to make sure they were even just kind of all the way around so I marked them glued them on and then trimmed the sides again rather than measuring I just kind of put it on and cut it I just took one of those same pieces and folded it in half. Now this was b without cutting it for shingles. Just took it, folded it in half, and kind of put it over the top of the roof to give a finished edge. And I also didn't really like the way the corners of the building were looking, so I took just small, about quarter inch pieces, um, and then scored the inside so that they would fold evenly, and then put them kind of over each set of shingles on the corners so that it would have a more finished edge. of that was done I started making the sort of roof and covering for the front steps of resident services there's this triangle protrusion from the roof um, so I started off by just cutting that out of basswood and then I copied the same exact thing over again except with a hole on the inside on again it's just an old cereal box and glued that together so that it would have that 
uh, sort of molded finished look. Just put some glue on that, added another piece, just a small piece of the basswood right in the middle to hold the roof up and then used the same cereal box to make the edge of the roof. Now I knew that there was going to be an angle to it to get it to the roof. Um, but rather than try and do that with that first initial piece, um, I decided to just do that with the shingles. And then for the pillars that are on the front, I actually had these, um, these pencils, these mechanical pencils. I have like 300 of them in my house um, for some reason. I don't know. So the barrels of those wound up actually being the perfect size for the pillars on the front porch of the resident services. So I just trimmed them to size and then sort of sanded the ends and the outside edges of it so that I could primer them. I wrapped the bottom of them just in a piece of that cereal box because they have sort of a, a wider pillar at the bottom. They're, the pillars are wider at the bottom than they are in the center and then they have sort of a squared top so again I just used the cereal box um, and mounted it with some hot glue to the top of the pencil barrels to make it look like pillars and then put the roof on top of that just securing everything with hot glue and then the same shingles that I used for the other side of the roof I used for this and that's how I was able to get all the way up to the edge and make it look like one seamless piece so I just used the shingles to give that effect rather than cutting the whole roof that way um, then I just started making the windows I did a base out of basswood I'm still not happy with the way these turned out I will probably wind up editing that one day, but that's not today. Um, so I put uh, a back piece of basswood for the base of the window and then sort of just cut the same shape out of the cereal box to put on top of it for the brick pattern that was around the window. After that, I started making the walls for the clock tower section on, that's on the top of the roof that holds the clock. And I actually uh, sort of destroyed one of my fiance's old watches um, that he just didn't want anymore because the, the band of it had broken and it was just a mess. So he let me have it and <laughs> I stole the clock piece out of it. So it will have a functioning clock on the top of resident services. It's not the perfect size, but it was close enough for me. <laughs> and so I just, I made, um, sort of the structure out of basswood um, just cutting an angle so that it would set properly on the roof it still wasn't I couldn't quite get a perfect fit because I don't measure things and that's my own dagnabbit fault but um, that's fine I just put a whole butt ton of hot glue in there to make it stay where it was supposed to so um, that was fine <laughs> and then I wound up cutting a little section out of the side of it so that the arm of the stopwatch would fit in there um, and then I just used some basswood and a cereal box to make the roof in the same fashion that I had done the rest of the roof but I didn't glue it on so that it could be removable so that I could change the battery in the clock whenever I needed to.
now that my desk was cleared off, it was time to put a primer coat all over everything. Um, so I just used the same gesso that I had used for the base of the plaza to cover just the entire thing in gesso. And I did do two coats of the gesso just to make sure that everything had a nice good base for the paint to stick on. Here is where I start to fix the mistake. The paper that was on the outside of the foam board, I guess it just didn't like all of the stuff that I had set on top of it. It wound up being, and this is kind of gross, but soggy. <laughs> um, it didn't set well. I didn't like the way the bricks were looking. I just wasn't happy with it. It was peeling off. And I hated it. <laughs> so now I know for future um, buildings that I make. So I won't make the same problem on Able Sisters or anything else like that. But I just used a mechanical pencil for making the brick pattern on the outside of Able's. And then just did another coat of gesso all over the whole thing. Um, it wound up doing two coats. One on screen, one off. So that any paint that I put on the outside would stick because uh, I just the paper was not a good idea and I didn't know that until I tried it and now I do and I'll never do it again and finally we get color um, the minute that I started putting color on any of this it just improved drastically so I started off with the bricks in the plaza and I thought that by painting the lighter bricks first that I was doing something good and then I wound up covering the whole thing anyway <laughs> so if I'd have really thought about that I wouldn't have mixed this up first but it's fine it's fine it still wound up turning out good um, I'm just using acrylic paints here I'm actually using the golden matte fluid acrylics which are my absolute favorite paints um, I use them for everything because I love the matte finish. They dry quickly, but not so quickly that it's hard to work with. It's super great coverage. I just, they're my hands down my favorite paint to work with. Um, and then I layered some purples here, talking to my fiance on the phone while I'm doing this. Um, and then um, also, just laying I laid down some purple paint because I knew that um, acrylics usually take a coat or two um, to cover now the goldens are pretty good you can see I've got great coverage with some of these darker colors but um, I knew it was gonna shine through a little bit um, once I painted the top coat so I painted a handful of these dark purple bricks and then I also go through and hand paint um, a bunch of green ones just so that once I painted the red on top that the texture would show through of these purple and green bricks. After that I just mixed up a nice brick red color and my dumb butt didn't make enough <laughs> of it. I, I try to waste as little paint as humanly possible but it was about this point where I realized I just wasn't going to make it so 
I just made some more and wound up covering the whole thing again. You can already see the where the purple and green texture is starting to come through. And I decided to just go ahead and cover all of the light colored bricks as well. And then just went back and mixed a, another light color for the lighter bricks and just painted over it because I just was easier at that point. then took that same light tone that I had used for the accent bricks in the plaza to cover the entirety of the resident services building because I had made plenty of it and it was it was just the right tone um, I do think it was a little bit too orangey looking back but that's fine it still looks good <laughs> and I'm happy with the end result so I did that then mixed up a little bit darker of a color for the what am I painting there? Why am I painting off screen? Oh no. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I painted, there's um, sort of a darker strip of brown around the bottom of resident services and then also brown for the door. And then I think this is probably the most stark and satisfying contrast is I mix a blue with just a little bit of purple to get the right tone for the roof and all of a sudden it is now recognizable as the resident services from Animal Crossing New Horizons. I was going to be using a lot of a bit of an off-white color for like the marble and all of that plus a wash on a lot of this plus the walls at the top of the clock tower so I went ahead and got a container um, this is actually something that I found in the food section at the dollar store um, are these little containers and they're perfect for when you know you have a slightly sizable amount of paint that you have to mix up. And also this sort of off-white color is something that I'll know I'll use in other projects. So I didn't mind having a little bit extra. And I, for this particular set, I wanted more paint than I needed rather than having less. And then I also took the second little cup there and made a wash with it and this is the most satisfying part of the whole video right here it's putting the wash over the entirety of the plaza making the grout really stand out and just lightening up the whole thing a little bit because it was a little dark um, so um, super satisfying just water and a little bit of that cream colored paint to make that wonderful wash um, then also painting the back of the clock because it was just hands down the wrong color. Um, <laughs> so I just painted the back of the clock. I had a little bit of a mishap on the front of resident services there. So I had to mix up close to a matching color to get it just right. And I had a little extra, so I wanted to really brighten up those um, accent rings on the plaza for that. I also wanted to do a little bit of dry brushing on the roof of resident services so I just made this lighter blue color in with a very very dry brush. Just added a little bit of paint onto the roof just to make it look like it's been out in the weather. Um, with Mr. Nook inside working really hard. <laughs> um, then it's just touch ups on the windows and adding the paneling to the windows. And then there's a little yellow circle on the inside of the clock. Um, gray for the steps of the building. Um, just all of the little accent touches that take it from you know, just looking like a building to looking like a really cool building.
time for the final little accent pieces. <laughs> um, we've got the bulletin board and the flagpole. Now the flagpole is just the sort of the centerpiece uh, from the same pencils that I had cut up before the same mechanical pencils. There was just this little white straw thing in the middle that held the lead and I didn't even cut it. It was just the right size. And then I went through my daughter's bead collection and found a bead that exactly fit um, the bottom of the flagpole and sort of made the base for the flagpole. It has an X on it, so it wasn't a letter they were gonna use very much. <laughs> and it didn't make too much of a difference in the bottom of the flagpole, plus it just kind of looks like it's supposed to be there. I used metal wire to just sort of form little door handles, um, just kind of bent little pieces of wire. And then I wanted to double check the game itself to make sure that I was putting things where they were supposed to be. So um, just to kind of check my markings on things where these um, light posts are gonna go. Those are light posts I actually found at Hobby Lobby in their like train section. And so I just kind of wired those through and glued them on and then made the bulletin board out of just basswood and then I just painted it and then I had those little pieces of paper that were just printer paper that I cut into pieces and then I colored them with a Copic marker and just used a pencil to just kind of scribble on them so that it looked like they were written on and then again raided my daughter's bead collection to get tiny little seed beads that looked like the push pins. And this honestly was probably my favorite part because it's just so tiny and cute and wonderful. <laughs> And if you'll notice, I left a lip of foam board around the edge. Um, that's mostly just to protect it until I can actually put it on my physical island. Um, so temporarily, I just kind of painted the edges green as if it were grass around resident services, just as a placeholder until I get my physical island built and ready to go. Um, so. Yeah, just, just something to hold me off aesthetically until I can get it finished. Here it is. I love the overall look of it. Um, I There are some things that I would do differently if I did it again. Um, mostly these windows. Um, I might in the long term wind up having to redo that because I would like to do something where it's actually clear window film and um, that they would look inside um, even though there would be nothing there or maybe to just put a little box in where they can glow so that I can have lights as you can see I've got these lanterns they are a little small but I'm not like they're close enough right they're close enough for me to be happy about it um, they're flickering a little bit because I didn't long term hook them up uh, because like I said I want this to go into my island so I legitimately right now I'm just got the wires taped to a battery and that's why they keep flickering because unless I hold it <laughs> it doesn't want to stay on um so I left them loose like that intentionally though so that when we are building the island um we can put the wires through and sort of wire them together into a harness and have it 
be like a switch that turns on in the front of the island or something. So um, that's that. Um, I left. I put this on eventually. I'm going to want to change the flag as we do, as we play the game, um, to represent our island's theme, um, which I still haven't decided. I mean, I've, I've made this. Um, so I left this loose, and I'm gonna let go of the lights now, so they're gonna be weird, but that's fine. I left that just kind of loose. I'm probably gonna wind up anchoring it somehow, but it's just sitting there because this is, it's, I haven't changed the batteries yet. I've gotta change the batteries in it, but it is an actual, mostly functional. Find out what happened, there we go. It's a functional, clock. So um, I stole this out of one of my fiance's old watches and I've got it to where I, well, if I do it the right way, mount it in and then I can change the batteries on it and everything. So we'll have a functional clock so i know this doesn't look exactly like none of it looks exactly like resident services but i think it's overall recognizable as what it is you know um so that was good i like it i like it for those of you that watch either bewick or becca with a book um <laughs> and uh so yeah this this turned out really cute. Um, this was my, excuse the, uh, woodpecker. I hope that's a blue jay in my window. Anyway, um, this was one of my favorite things. It just turned out so cute. And all I did was take little pieces of printer paper and I colored them with a really light, um, Copic marker, alcohol-based marker to give them the little different tone. And then these are just beads. So I think that turned out really cute. Um, and then of course, Mr. Nook here, I had to grab him to display because I wanted this to be the scale. Um, so these are the Friends dolls, the Tamadachi dolls. I have a bunch of them. I will be repainting some of them because I have duplicates. And I'm missing a couple. I'm missing Isabella, right? I put her here too, but um, I've got to find. I'm only missing three at this point. I'm missing Isabel and Flick and Flurry from Series 1, and I have all of Series 2 and Series 3. So they will be a part of the island as well. So we have a lot to build to make this island. I am not positive how I'm physically going to build the island yet or where I'm going to put it, because it's going to be big, you know. Um, but this is, this is a dream. This is a, a, this is a dream of mine, and I'm going to make it happen. So, plus I think it'd be fun for you guys to watch. If you think so too, let me know in the comments below. Uh, also let me know what you'd like to see next. Um, I have built a, um, nook's cranny i built a nook's cranny already but it was before i had plans for all of this so um it's not really to scale i might include it anyway so I'm, i don't know about nooks yet um i still need to build able sisters and the museum um but also i mean villager houses you know and um all of the trees and so um yeah this is this is gonna be a huge project but i'm i'm invested <laughs> i like it um so let me know what you guys think of how i did with my little resident services um yeah i think it turned out pretty good um, <laughs> obviously not an exact le replica um but I'm really happy with it. And um, 
if you guys would like to see a tour of my last Animal Crossing island, it's something I haven't really done yet. Um, I've got a capture card, but I gotta figure out how to get it all hooked up and everything. Um, so I thought about doing a tour of my most recent island, which is, I think, a room and a half in one of the houses away from being finished. Um, if you guys would like to stream, maybe, possibly, um, the creation I'm thinking about doing, creating an island on the Switch to replicate in real life. Um, so this is part of why I'm just building the buildings at first. Um, because I don't know how I want the island set up yet. I've got to figure out a table to put it on and blah, 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 blah. blah. So, I hope you guys like this. I had a lot of fun. Um, and I hope to do some more of them. And uh, if you did, let me know in the comments. Let me know what building you would like to see next from me and Mr. Nook here. And see how many bells I need to borrow from him to do this again. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys next time. And until then, just remember. Why not you? See you later, guys.